All right, guys, welcome. If you're new to the channel, we go through stock charts, stock market technical analysis. Uh, some of the calls I get right, some of the calls I get wrong. <clears throat> and so we'll go through here. Let's see what we got and try to read what the chart's telling us today. NASDAQ futures here. So Qs, as I've been pointing out on my channel, the tech stocks, Qs, FANG, that's really the most important thing to be watching because the the market cap weightings that those things carry in the indices pretty much throw their weight around and move the indices. So we definitely want to keep an eye on those. And that's why NASDAQ and the Qs is really the most important when it comes to understanding where the S&P 500 and the market as a whole is going to go. So here's what we got. We dropped down on the NASDAQ futures, undercut this support level that you can see we had right here and has have since recovered. Now we have this uptrend line right here that's really been in place since April. And this uptrend line is held every single time. And this impulsive drop here, uh, you know, we undercut all the way down here. We're starting to creep back up. So this is a daily chart. If a day, you know, if the day closes back up in this area, that's pretty bullish because that's a, you know, that was a pretty hard sell off and they were able to bid it back up and recover support. So that would be a false breakdown, bear trap, something to watch for. Uh, obviously the day's not over. Now, if the day closes below here, what I would expect is at some point in time, we'll probably get a back test of this trend line uh, right up here. Could be on Monday or Tuesday some point in time we'll get some sort of a back test but that most likely will be resistance and we will have started the next trend to the downside because this trend will have been broken all right so that's nasdaq futures let's look at the cues same deal here on the cues you can see uptrend line right here and uh, you can see lots of reactions we we had a nice impulsive sell-off from the top undercut all the way down here under this 275 level we're starting to creep back up but again you want to see a close you know if this is a daily chart so a daily close back around this 281 it's about 282 would be a recovery of that broken support if it can't recover that and the day closes you know down below broken support then i would say that is going to be pretty bearish and that is going to mean that this this rally support line this trend line that the Qs has held really since april will now it'll be the first daily close below that trend line uh, and you want to see not just a marginal close below you want to see it close you know down here on 278 or 275 you want to see a nice impulsive close below uh, but if it can't do that and you know if it, so a close below the trend line, I guess is what I'm trying to say. A nice solid close, daily close below is bearish. That's a nice break of support right here on the daily chart. A close back above or at or just slightly below uh, could be read as, as potentially bullish. So we'll watch for that. Okay, let's take a look at the dollar and gold. Here's dollar starting to break out. This is a daily chart, so you know we haven't broke out yet. You gotta wait for the daily close. Let's look at the hourly chart here. All right, so this is what I was saying I thought was gonna happen, but um, you've got this, this kind of downward bullish falling wedge, which was playing out. It kept you know undercutting and, and walking down this wedge here, but it looked like it was gonna break out to the upside. And when you see price action like this, when it's just, consolidating right at resistance, uh, not moving down, but not breaking above, then oftentimes you get some sort of an impulsive breakout. And that's what this was right here, broke to the upside. Um, we're not, you know, it hasn't moved too much above. So again, that daily chart will be key. If a daily, you know, if it can't hold above here, it doesn't get a daily close and falls back down, then that would be pretty bearish because on the dollar, because that is, that would be a false breakout basically on the dollar. So watch for that. But if the dollar can move higher here and does hold, then again, I look for a back test all the way up here at this 95. And I point that out here on the weekly. 95 is the trend line that you make on the weekly. You can see we've just had several reactions. We've broken down below it, but I'm looking for a back test of that. 
um, or at least up in that area. It doesn't always have doesn't have to do a full back test, but at least something to go up in that direction. That's what I'm looking for. So if the dollar continues to break higher, then expect to see gold continuing to fall. Now here's the, let's go start with the daily. You can see that we're starting to break this, this triangle, the symmetrical triangle, that pattern that we've been making, but it's not that impulsive. So that's the thing that gives me pause. When I see a breakdown of the trend line and it's not impulsive, I usually don't believe it. I, I look for the false breakdown or, you know, you wanna look for the fake out when you see something that's not impulsive. When something's impulsive and you see lots of traders jumping on board, usually it'll stick. Um, so we'll watch this. I mean, you can see here's the hourly, it's breaking down. Um, gold is continuing to break down. If this continues and can stick, then look for, you know, ultimately I think that puts 1790 in play on gold. Here's Here it is, 1790. That's a nice healthy pullback on gold. Uh, you know, maybe down to 1750, somewhere right in that area. Could even undercut, but any undercut I would expect to be a false breakdown. It sh you should see a lot of buyers step in. Uh, but that's a nice healthy pullback on gold that is in a bull market. So this trend line, this upward trend line right here, this red one, that's your bull market. Uh, at least I believe that's the bull market. So a pullback to support is where you buy gold and in various miners. And silver really should follow suit. You know, silver is, you know, gold leads and silver follows. That's typically how it how it works. So flipping back over to the Qs real quick, because this price action is kind of happening right now. You can see we held this 275. We're starting to move up. Looks like we're gonna run up and do a back test. So watch for what that what happens after we do that back test. You know, do we run up and back test and then reject and start to sell off more? Uh, it should be impulsive, the rejection, or does it recover or chop around here and kind of hold in this area? That is, uh, that's something to watch for. Uh, small caps, IWM for anyone who's interested in this. So all I really have for IWM is I've got this range right here, this area, and I think if I mark that out with a shape, there it is. So this is a big consolidation range in IWM. I marked it out here. The lower end of the range is sitting right around 145.50, and the upper end of the range is sitting about 159.50. Um, and you can see we ran up, tagged the upper end of the range twice actually. You can see tagged it here, tagged it here. Now we're starting to reject and head back down to the lower end of the range. So IWM really for bigger picture, you know, consolidation range, this big sideways range. A break down, a break below is bearish, and until then, we'll probably hold in this range for a little while. So, right now, we're sitting about middle of the range, so kind of no man's land. Nothing to really do there for me, at least. Uh, the other thing that gives me a little pause on, you know, can, more sh uh, selling, I guess, in the in the short term, is the is the VIX and the UV UVXY. It's not really popping today. It's being sold into. And this was what I was talking about. Usually when you get that, what happens is you've got traders that are offsides or they're way they're you know positioned way too aggressively to the long side, things like that. And and we had a lot of froth in this market. People were buying these COVID stocks like crazy, thinking they were never going to go down. So what happens is there's a rush for the exits, and during that rush, a re, that repositioning, you get that surge in the VIX, and once the repositioning takes place, then the VIX usually will come down or can, can you know come down. So, so oftentimes you'll see even in a bear market after that initial repositioning, that initial surge, uh, the stocks will continue to fall, but the VIX will actually continue to fall. Volatility will continue to fall as well. So usually the volatility spikes on that initial repositioning move. And then you can see, uh, you can often see that continuing to fall. So I'm not seeing the VIX surge more today. It doesn't mean it can't continue next week. Uh, it's just coming down today with, and the Qs is, you know, you can see the Qs is they're continuing to buy it up, pushing it up towards this back test. So if this back test can recover, then that's a, this is going to be a bear trap, false bit breakdown. So keep a, keep a close eye for that. And let's look at bonds here. Now the bond market has been hijacked slightly by the Fed, so it doesn't give as good as signals. At we can't trust the signals as much 
because we know that the Fed is in there buying bonds. But something to continue to watch for. The, the Fed hasn't been buying bonds recently. You look at their balance sheet uh, and you'll notice they haven't been increasing their balance sheet. So the selling you know, seems to be true market forces. Now, what I see here is a potential bear flag. Uh, it, it doesn't mean it has to play out, but you have this flagpole here. You've got the flag kind of making its way right here. And this could set up for another leg down. Um, let me get rid of that line. Another leg down, something like that. Um, it doesn't have to play out, but it's just something to watch for. Okay, let's look at XLV. XLV is the second heavy, heaviest weighted sector in the S&P 500. And pretty clean rejection right off that resistance right there. You can see here's your resistance marked out on the daily chart. Um, and, you know, pretty clean rejection. So I think that sets us up for a move down to this 97 area. Uh, you know, it's not going to do it all at once. It's going to work its way down there over time. So that's, that's what I see on that one. And XLF is interesting because it's not really selling off that impulsively. The financials are holding it, hanging in there pretty much right here at resistance. You can see here's the daily chart showing the trend line and we broke that trend right here, but we've just been consolidating below resistance right there. So until you see some impulsive move, don't count this one out. All right, let's run through these fangs because they are really the most important uh, stocks to watch for market direction. Apple, we've got a trend line here off of the March lows. Reaction here, this is the hourly chart. Several reactions along here. We had the breakdown, which ended up being a false breakdown bear trap when it gapped up and ramped higher. So that was your bear trap. And now we're breaking down um, with, a, with another breakdown. So kickback rally, it looks like. We'll see if this can recover by the end of the day. If it can't, then that's, that's Apple below support. Um, that's bearish in general for Apple and for the market since Apple's kind of the largest stock. Microsoft, March lows here, and we've had a couple reactions right in here. Impulsive breakdown, kickback rally, but this one looks like it's probably not going to be able to get back up there. That's a ways up there. Um, from here, that's a 3 4%. It's possible, but that's a pretty big intraday reversal. Um, so probably going to have to count this one as broken below price support. That's bear. Amazon. Here's the trend line. Amazon's got kind of has two trend lines. If I go to the daily here, this is the, I believe it's the bull market trend line. Yeah, going back to 2009. So here's the bull market trend line in Amazon where you have the lows of 2009, a reaction here and a reaction here. So that's your, that's major support down there. Uh, and the bull market support from where we're at now that's still that's a 35% drop um, we could get down there of course um, it's tagged it twice throughout the bull market um, and if you look at the hourly chart we just broke this support that it's been in since May uh, it's tagged you know reaction here reaction 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 several reactions and then nice impulsive breakdown so probably going to get a kickback rally at some point in time this market loves to do kickback rallies is what I've noticed. So maybe we get that, but again, below support. So unless it can recover this quickly, that's bearish, that's a break in support. That sets this thing up for a move down towards the next uh, major trend support, which is all the way down here at the uh, that support that I pointed out. You know, depending on when it gets there, 2100, something like that, who knows. 30% drop is potentially in the cards. Let's look at NVIDIA. This is what I pointed out, what I thought was going to happen. Uh, and, you know, that's this is what's happened. So NVIDIA ramped up uh, above this bearish rising wedge. And I pointed out when you see something going above a bearish rising wedge to the upside, that's really low probability price action. Bearish, rise, bearish rising wedges are bearish patterns. They typically resolve to the downside. Um, but sometimes you'll see these fake out moves where They'll run up to the upside and then it resolve to the downside. And that's what it looks like what's going on. So we, we, we come all the way down to the bottom of the support right here. Um, 
and this is what I pointed out in the video yesterday. I thought it was going to head down to this support right here, hold, and then maybe chop around or flag a little bit and then break. Um, we don't have the break yet. Obviously, it broke, you know, it undercut today and it has since recovered. So, um, you know, probably going to flag around a little bit and then break maybe uh, next week or the week after that. And here's DocuSign. Um, obviously, I'm out of the trade. I, I took my profits yesterday. Um, and, you know, another 11% to the downside today. So, you know, this thing's pretty broken at this point. It's, uh, if you go to the daily, it's always important to kind of look at the larger time frame. So you can see this is the uptrend. So don't fall in love with the stock. You know, this was when it was uptrending. Everything was good. Everything was going higher. Uh, that trend was broken here. You did the back test. Now you failed. So usually the best you can hope for if you're bullish still is, a back test, you, you know, you can continue to back test and that can be a, a you know, a ways up there still. Obviously, if it did another back test from here, that could be a 30% gain, but you don't know that's going to happen. The only thing you do know is that there was an uptrend. You already had one back test and it's rejected off of that. We're now below price support. So to me, this one's uh, bearish and you just have to wait for breaks of key support levels to either get short or for back tests to get short. Uh, you know, I wouldn't be bullish this one because the trend's broken. All right. And that's why I would no longer want to be bullish. The major trend is broken. Yeah, it can go higher, but you're just, you know, it's just kind of, you're getting lucky, I guess, at that point where it, you know, has broken. It doesn't have price support. It doesn't have, it's not in an uptrend. That's the point I'm trying to make. Uh, here's a commodity, C-O-R-N, corn. I want to point this one out. You can see here, bearish falling wedge right here. Um, and this is the trend line I can mark out. I got a couple trend lines. If I go to the daily, this one's not my favorite because I've got one data point here and one reaction here. I just marked it out. It's not a trend line. I mean, I could even remove it because it's just not, it's not clear enough. I probably could make another one something like this. Uh, you know, maybe get three reactions there. One, two, three, four. That's a little cleaner. But recently we've got this this little bit of a bullish right, uh, falling wedge right here. And we broke to the upside. And you can see it's just been back testing the last few days right here. Um, holding above resistance. So I'd expect for it to ramp up and move higher. But obviously it could fail and come back down and create a false breakout as well. So just something to point out there. Um, as of right now, it's bullish, looks bullish to me uh, and looks like it should move higher. Uh, so I'm watching that. KHC here, not really in love with the price action today. I'm long this thing down slightly, um, looking to see how the day closes. But here's the thing, the black line here is major support uh, and slash resistance, uh, sitting at about 3325, 3330, something like that. And you can see we've started to break down, uh, below that, not impulsively though. I'm not seeing a ton of volume or really impulse, uh, an impulsive breakdown. So, I, you know, I suspect they'll ramp it up and recover this and hold this support here. If they do that, that's pretty bullish. And I talked about that. They might undercut this just slightly and then move it up and recover. If they if it can do that and hold, I would say that's pretty bullish and this thing should, you know, at that point it really looks positive like it over over the next coming weeks to months, like it could enter this gap and fill the gap um, and just really move quite a bit higher, possibly all the way up to 47, right around there. I don't think it's going to do it at that angle. Of course, I think it'll, you know, take time, but if it can recover from here and it was to fill the gap, that would be a potential trade of a 42% gain while collecting like a 6% dividend. Not a bad trade. Um, again, it's a trend trade. It's a swing trade. It takes time, but again, if it can't recover this and it closes below if you know, then we'll have to watch again. The only reason why it would be bullish is if it can recover and close above. Now, maybe it closes below today and next week we get a pop higher and it, you know, it starts trading up higher. That would be bullish, but we'll have to continue to watch that. <clears throat> okay. Let's look at BlackRock and we'll round it out 
the video out here today. Um, all right, so BlackRock, here's what I got. I've got this uptrend line. This is, you know, it's not the cleanest chart. It doesn't chart the cleanest, but this is what I could make. On the daily chart, I saw lots of reactions ar around this trend line here. And we have a breakdown, impulsive breakdown right there from that trend line. Uh, if I go to the weekly, you can see I can make, you know, lots of weeks where we just held this trend line right here and then nice impulsive break down. I can't make a trend line any other way on this uh, that really get captures a lot of reactions. I mean, I could do it something like that and that's been broken. Um, I could do something like that. That doesn't, you know, that's been broken. There's really nothing that I can make that uh, would, would be valid except for, you know, pretty much this trend line that I have right here. So this is a breakdown. Um, I see this thing probably coming down to, oh, it's hard to say, you know, you've got some gaps right here. So here's a gap. Uh, right there, got some price support right about there, uh, sitting at 543. Uh, and, you know, probably get a reaction there, maybe even a kickback rally of the trend line. I mean, at some point, I would think you'd get a kickback rally, uh, a break of that. And you've got another gap right in, and it's right about there. There's your price support. right around uh, 498. So that's what I got there on BlackRock. Um, you know, there there was negative divergence in play as well, as you can see here, right there on the PPO. And yeah, right there on the RSI. And so negative momentum as prices continued to move higher. You can see here, this was a marginal high right here slightly higher price right there on that candle, lower momentum. So negative divergence, it's starting to play out. So I think this thing's set up to go down is what it looks like to me. That's all I got for the video, guys. Again, all the trades and ideas here are just my opinion. Nothing is uh, ad trading advice. Trading is obviously risky. And, you know, see a financial advisor if you want investing or, or trading advice. And I'll catch you guys on the next one. Thanks. Bye.